Well, last week or in the week gone by, Indian badminton took a significant step ahead. It won its first ever badminton Asia team championship title. Now, why was that significant? It was significant because previously the Indian team had never even crossed the quarterfinals and this time around when Indian team won it, there were three youngsters who were all under the age of 21 who were leading India's charge. Not just that, on the way to the title, they beat three fancy teams. China, Japan and Thailand, all three heavyweights not just in Asia but on the world stage. To decode the significance of this title, we have with us uh, Shivani Naik who is the resident badminton expert at the Indian Express and Vinayak uh, Mohanarangan who is somebody who watches an unhealthy amount of sport. I think that's how I'm going to identify him every time he's on the pod now. This week I think you will notice that my co-host uh, for Game Time podcast Mihir Vasavda is not around so this is me Amit Kamat uh, anchoring the show Shivani welcome Vinayak you as well hope you guys are doing okay Shivani I wanted to understand first from you what is the significance of uh, you know India winning this uh, badminton Asia team championship I think it's just great that Indian women shuttlers are winning again it's been a while since we had a title of a significant level So yeah as a team with everyone contributing it's great that we have three competitive uh, singles players and the doubles stripped in which is a huge step forward i mean that used to be a problem that we uh, did not have three i mean there's a difference between having two good singles players and having three decent singles players so uh, i think that gap was sort of bridged and the doubles was absolutely awesome pinayak i think one of the takeaways uh... from this whole tournament for india was the fact that i think the succession line of indian women's badminton players will not end with the uh, pv sindhu you know you have people ready to step up and take the mantle if not only in singles also in doubles can you just talk about that a little bit the players that are coming through and the players that caught your eye at the tournament yeah i think that was one of the most significant things uh, before the tournament began i personally thought it was just a tournament to see where sindhu stood at we knew we had two decent double players double players were doing well in the tournament but i didn't think that we had the depth to go all the way despite the fact that you know uh, china japan and few other countries korea didn't send their team china japan were weak and even all that considered i didn't think we had the depth to go all the way so that was very heartening to see like shivani said you know trisha jolly and gayatri gopichand both 20 they've been around for a while it doesn't feel like they're still only 20 and they've had some significant results but end of last year was not great for them so they needed a shot in the arm and i think uh, this week was very very significant for them and given both of them are 20 and both of them are they complement each other superbly on court they're very talented kids for them to go ahead and beat two world number 10 pairs like they did they had a really good asian mixed team championships as well last year so kind of to bring back that early february march sort of form where they usually do well at all england i think that was very very significant for them and yeah so that is one young group uh we young pair of shuttlers we can see for a long time around hopefully and obviously uh beyond sindhu there's always been this question who next you know we've had a sort of a lost generation post sindhu with the kinds of you know akashi kashyap malvika banso i would put ashmita chaliha in that group even though she had a really good week as well defeating nozumi okwara but what beyond them was always a question and to see anmol do that well in three high pressure matches against significantly higher rank players in what was only her second i think international tournament at the senior level that i think yeah those two aspects are the biggest takeaways for uh, india and there's also the fact that there are few more younger shuttlers who are still around like tanvi was part of the team she was the national runner up to anmol and she's younger than anmol i think 15 or 16 maybe so there are there's a good good group of young shuttlers coming through and it was nice to see them sort of step up at a good stage shivani i wanted to understand from you you know obviously vinayak called this the akashi is the malvikas as the lost generation the generation between maybe the anmols and uh, trisha jollies and you know the generation between them and uh, sindhu what must uh, you know trisha gayatri and anmol now that they've already had this team title what do they have to do so that they don't you know get classified as that lost generation what is the next step in their progression in uh, professional badminton see the thing is we have to remember that both saina and sindhu were uh, remembered for the medals that they won and the titles that they won okay so the bar is set really high for both 
Chikisa Gayatri and uh, Anmol as well as uh, Ashmita I think it is always going to be about whether they can have a good week of matches have like five good matches or four good matches and if they are capable of winning titles because that's where the bar is set okay so going forward that remains the same Trisha Gayatri and uh, Anmol or the rest of the bunch be it unnati huda or uh, tanvi of course tanvi was you know leading in the nationals uh, final before she had an injury so she might well have been playing the fifth rubber here if she had kind of continued there but there is her there's also devika seha there is a bunch of youngsters but the ultimate aim will always be the number of titles that they win and uh, it can't just be about getting into let's say the top from 15 to 35 bracket or 15 to 40 bracket which will be like a middling thing where uh, i think malvika and akrishi and others are sort of stuck they have to take that next step so everyone will be judged by that very very high bar of winning titles somebody like saina has 10 super series titles and mold is yet to i mean she's yet to play a super 300 so it's very very early days and uh, comparison is not even fair but what they need to do is to target the titles because that's where indian badminton is at right now it is not going to settle for uh, just a good week and just a semi final so that's what these women should be targeting i think uh, shivani one of the stand out lines from all the copies that you wrote over the week about the badminton asia team championship was when you said the koi nayi phase of indian badminton has officially begun Could you maybe kind of uh, elaborate on that for our listeners? What is this koi nai phase of uh, Indian badminton? It's basically very very fearless badminton where you're not uh, bogged down by reputations of opponents. Badminton is watched a lot in India, okay? The international badminton. And you also have the whole Saina Di and the entire aura of top stars from within India. So for a youngster to actually go to one of these team events and play the fifth rubber as if it's um, you know this is just another <laughs> match and uh, there were players i mean she did face players who had better power than her who had better pace than her but she was completely unfazed you know so she could drop a point and she could kind of bounce back in the next point i think that is what koina is it is uh, about you know just sort of letting go of the last point and moving forward and uh, that is something that probably saina had that is something that um, sindhu completely aced at the top level after a point in time but that fearlessness is just naturally there in anmol it isn't there in some of the other 17 year olds so it is a very stand out feature of her game which makes up for a few other things which are lacking and uh, which can sort of stop her in making that top 20 level and just having a big heart is i think absolutely phenomenal too it's it's great to watch right like more than anything else it's just awesome badminton to watch and then she wins also so the next loss that she has we can actually say ki koi nahi you know you can go on to the next match and aim for that one there is that uh, reassurance in that uh, woman to that we can actually keep hoping that she will win at some point because she has it in her right right when i uh, anmol obviously had uh, one of the standout performances that we've seen from any indian shuttler not only against china but also against japan and thailand she basically single handedly pulled india out of point where they were 2-2 and she was playing the decisive rubber for india what stood out for you maybe about anmol obviously shivani has spoken about this awesome badminton that she plays this fearless brand of badminton that she plays but maybe anything else that uh, kind of caught your eye about her uh, playing style I think Shivani covered almost everything. So the one thing that I will remember uh, from that week is how she walked onto the court in the final at two-two against uh, Thailand with everything to play for. She just had the biggest smile when she carried her kit and entered the court and placed it in next to the umpire, and she, she just seemed like she was enjoying the occasion, right? Just to be there, so happy to be there. I think that's a very nice attitude to have, and I hope she carries on that sort of attitude towards playing badminton for a long time. She also looked like a very keen learner. couple of things that i noticed and even uh, gopi chan told shivani in that q and a is uh, she turns around to the coach and asks whether it has to be a high serve or a low serve when she is in doubt and then you see during game interval she's like attentive she soaks it all in when gopi chan was speaking to her 
and generally seemed very tactically assured on court uh, like when to pull up uh, opponent forward when to go for the kill she has a couple of good kill shots which i think was a problem for the kind of people that we spoke about akashi was very good at you know extending rallies but she just never had a really good kill shot malvika had her weapons but she wasn't consistent so that sort of a anmol comes across as a player who is good at a lot of things not really like great at anything yet at least so far uh, she comes across as a well rounded player who can kill off points when she has to you know with her uh, drops and smashes and cross court at the net and she has a few of those options which i think is essential if you have to succeed and uh, yeah it really stood out and i think yeah just another one thing that we do need to add also is how we speaking about all these youngsters but it was really nice for me to see ashwini win a team gold at uh, 34 as i mean she probably didn't have the tournament that she would have imagined with Tan- tanisha getting injured but it was really nice to see her win alongside you know sindhu we know but nice to see ashwini do did have the gold medal as well at the end yeah absolutely but uh, you know vinayak you mentioned uh, how it was nice for uh, you to see somebody like an ashwini win at this stage of her career in a team that is propelled mostly by people who are not even maybe 20 21 one of the other takeaways from me and this i think anmol uh, spoke in her interview with the uh, shivani was the advice that she was constantly getting from sindhu like sindhu telling somebody a kid like anmol that you know ek point agar chala gaya to never mind bol ke aage bad jao things like that i mean all of these things we i am assuming that athletes anyway know but when it comes from a sindhu then i think it kind of matters more right shivani yeah i think it's been very important that all the coaches or the support staff as well as the senior players and this is what anmol spoke of as well so did her coach who was in touch with her none of them actually put pressure on her to win and that is really really important in india right now because we are all desperate to answer the question who after sindhu but that pressure cannot really creep into the player herself because then things are going to get very very difficult so As long as she is told ki tu ja khel aur paachwa matlab match jeet gaye to jeet gaye if not that is also okay and she was told that uh, specifically koi dikkat nahi yeah koi dikkat nahi and even sindhu telling her that like don't take the whole load of carrying indian badminton's future forward and all that so all those grand uh, things yes we can expect we should be expecting those but it is very important that the pressure doesn't really trickle into the player herself So I think that has been very very important. Just one thing if I could add I think that's like the beauty of the team events in badminton right. We saw that at Thomas Cup a couple of years back with uh, you know someone like a Priyanshu getting to be a part of this team even though he didn't play a lot and he's spoken about how huge it was for him to be a part of a squad which actually ended up being becoming the world champions and you know for Anmol to stand next to Sindhu when the medals were being handed out and for uh, Tanisha and all these doubles players to have Ashwini guide them even uh, Priyan Shruti the national champions that this sort of thing doesn't happen all through year on badminton even while training they're all in their own own different academies so when they get together for a team event is when all these things happen and it's it's the beauty of team events and it really i mean one of the things that makes me really happy about indian badminton is how they are started taking team events really seriously and trying to do well and like sudhiman ka plus year for example when they didn't do well it kind of hurt them so it's not like they're just to- showing up with these team events to you know just see where they are at and it's it's that's really nice to see and i think that's one of the beauties of events like these that doesn't really happen often in badminton but it, when it does it, it's it's beautiful to watch in fact when i that reminds me especially when you have a multidisciplinary games i remember being at uh, birmingham shivani was there with me for the commonwealth games and we remembered how much the there was some sort of a cross you know sporting mutual admiration society going on between sharath kamal on one side and the shuttlers on the other side everybody was a fan of sharath anna you know sharath would go and sit in the stands and cheer for the shuttlers and vice versa so in fact we also saw at uh, the asian games i believe at hangzhou that uh, people like ruturaj gaikwad people like vvs lakshman they were in the stands cheering for the indian uh, teams i believe in badminton if i'm not mistaken so obviously team events uh, there is a very special beauty in in a sport like badminton which is very individualistic very isolationist pursuit if you will but shivani i wanted to check with you you mentioned you know about anmol that she is good at a lot of things not great at too many things there are a certain things that are lacking that maybe will hold her back from you know breaching the top 20 at some point like right now obviously it's a bit of a stretch because she's uh, what 378 if i'm not mistaken somewhere around that sorry 
She's ranked 478, not even 378. See, we have to remember that both uh, Saina and Sindhu came onto the international circuit. So they were blooded on the circuit with great power in their game. And power is huge, okay? It's a huge part of badminton, which was also of shock value, which is how they got those big wins against the Chinese in case of uh, Sindhu. And against, let's say, the Danes like uh, Tina Rasmussen and uh, whoever Saina's uh, Chinese opponents were at that point in time. They lost uh, quite a bit. But the thing is, the big wins came from the shoulder power. Now, Anmol has a great, I mean, she has a big heart. Does she have the lungs and does she have the shoulder to kind of, you know, be at that level? It is an absolutely different level. And uh, till the strength develops, till the endurance is something that she's probably good at. But she has a decent kill shot, like when I said. But the thing is, she has to set it up for herself. You know, she has to maneuver the opponent around and then find the gap. She's almost like Surya Kumar Yadav, okay, in kind of spotting gaps. I don't know if the comparison is uh, whatever, but <laughs> but yeah, when you think of finding gaps and you know working uh, your brain towards finding those gaps, I think she is in that Surya sort of mold. But the thing is, at the absolute top level, the top fifteen. Her smashes or her shots, even her drops, are going to be defended. In um, slow courts, it, I mean, all the more. And most courts are slow courts uh, around the world uh, for the big events. So that is going to be a problem. She will have to be prepared for very, very long rallies. But she can't also get stuck into that thing of, you know, I will sort of out-rally an opponent. She will need to develop a weapon. She will need to develop that big kill smash, which cannot be retrieved, be it with the steep angle or the power or the just the placement. And uh, yeah, I think once she gets that, and also, I mean, we are almost in the golden generation of women singles, right? So if she gets into those big draws, we are actually dealing with very, very intelligent players at the top level. And uh, it's sort of good that she's coming along right now because there will be a few, fair few retirements at that level. But even the next bunch, it's not going to be easy to sort of, you know, crack into the top 10 the way Saina and uh, Sindhu, you know, they just kind of smashed into the top 10 within a few years or Sindhu had her first world championship medal at 17. So it is going to be tough because of the game. But uh, these are not things that cannot be developed. So there is potential there because you can always develop power. You can always develop, uh, you know, speed. But the basic court craft, the basic um, brains to play badminton is something that she has. So your base is set. Well, your base is set. And uh, as Shivani declared in one of her uh, pieces, Indian uh, badminton's koinai phase has officially begun. Yeah. No, I think, you know, the team gold, we've spoken a lot about Anmol. But the thing is, all the pressure of actually pulling out those matches was on uh, Sindhu and Gayatri and Teresa. And also, like, we cannot ignore that Ashmita delivered against Nozomi Okuhara. Okay. So, the fifth rubber, yes. But getting it to 2-2 is largely because of, like, these people. And the pressure was far more on them. And even on Teresa and Gayatri, because they've just been under immense pressure from fans, from uh, people expecting them to kind of show the results. And uh, Ever since that All England run, right? I think, yeah. I mean, Gayatri, because she is Gopi Chan's daughter, and Teresa, because she's so immensely talented, right? Like, she's just unbelievable. And uh, for me, Teresa would be the MVP of the whole tie, of the whole uh, championship. Because of the way she played, she actually had an amazing soft drop at, I think, 20 all in one of the, in the semis. And uh, that's a huge thing for her. We know her for her smashes, but uh, she's getting her drops going and she's made a lot of errors on those drops previously. So for her to pull that out at that crucial juncture, I think that was amazing. And uh, it's good to see Sindhu back. She lost the semis singles match. But getting that first match in the finals was important. So those are good omens for the season ahead. Absolutely. Vinayak, you want to get in the last word before I uh, close this? No, I think that was perfect what Shivani just said. I think, yeah, uh, the pressure on Trisa and Gayatri is something that we don't really appreciate enough for two 20-year-olds. And for them, I think, yeah, they were probably the stars of the week for me as well in terms of the quality of the opponents that they beat. So, yeah, it's great to see them do well. And I think it's a very interesting couple of weeks ahead in terms of Race to Paris, how it goes between them and Ashwini Tanisha. So, yeah, something to look forward to. Great. 
on that note let me just end by again reiterating what shivani nayak has written in our piece so uh, the, the koi nayi phase of indian badminton has officially begun well this is me amit kamat uh, saying goodbye from on behalf of game time podcast and also on behalf of my teammates today vinayak and shivani we will be back next week with another episode and hopefully with our co-host mihir vasavda till then see you bye thank you You were listening to Express Sports by the Indian Express. This week's show was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar and produced by me, Shashank Bhargav. If you like the show, then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also recommend the show to someone you think will like it. Share it with a friend or someone in your family. It's the best way for people to get to know about us. You can also tweet us at Express Podcasts and write to us at podcasts at IndianExpress dot com. 